Hi there, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to make a button from my 20 to stitch fabric buttons book, which was published by Search Press. Today, we're going to look at the Kelly button. So let's get started. So today we're going to look at one of the buttons in this 20 to stitch fabric buttons book. Um, this was published by Search Press a few years ago. At the time of recording, I think it might be just about coming um, to the point at which it will be out of print. Um, I have no control over that. I do still have some um, of my own copies on the website. so. If you want to take a look, then um, do stop over there. I think it might still be available on the Search Press website as downloads, but don't quote me on that one. So the button we're going to look at today is one that I named Kelly. And that's this pretty little button here. So it's a very nice, um, simple button uh, using fabric and so what you're going to need you're going to need a fabric or bias strip for um, the outside ring so you can buy pre-made bias strip or you can make bias strip and you're going to need a fabric for the center you're also going to need a plastic ring uh, this one is a 20 um, millimeter plastic ring. You can use any other ring that you wish. I just like the profile on the plastic rings is quite fat. And so I think that adds to the design of the button. A different ring will of course look different. This button could in theory be washed. I would gently wash any garment with a handmade button on it. Um, or remove the buttons anyways, but by using the plastic ring, you have got the option that it can be washed. Um, as I say, a gentle wash. Um, I haven't tried this particular button in a dryer, but so I would just, you know, let it hang on the line. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a plain piece of cotton um, for my bias strip and I'm going to make my bias strip. Now ideally you want 25 centimeters of bias strip for this particular um, size ring but you can play around with that and it doesn't have to be a continuous strip because of the way that we're going to wrap. So I'm just going I'm going to use my Yubinuki uh, tool to create my bias strip because it has a nice a diagonal there to enable you to create a bias strip to make a Yubinuki. So let's see, I want to get the most fabric as I can. So I'm going to line up one of these lines. Let's do it. So basically I'm lining up the diagonal to the straight of grain. It should give me my 45 degree angle. This is um, a fusion pan, one of the ones where the heat, um, a friction ball actually, where the heat erases it, but it doesn't matter, you can use a pencil. You won't see these lines anyways afterwards. Um, and I need this to be 15 millimeters wide. Okay, so let's just get the ruler, make ourselves two marks. Now, 
because I have marked this as long as I possibly can, I could carry on and make all of the rest for a set of buttons, which of course I highly recommend because you don't just want one button for a garment. And then I'm going to cut this out. So there's my bias strip and now we need a circle for the center. So I'm going to use my uh, button templates and I'm going to use the inside of dot two for this. And while I'm measuring, I also need a piece of felt for the back. I'll use white and this one needs to be much smaller. We might as well cut this out now. So I'm using the first circle in the template. So I'll go ahead and cut these out. All cut out. Now you're also going to need something to use as a stuffing. A little bit of cotton wool is fine. Some wadding if you prefer and you have it. Um, any of those things will count. So now we'll get to the making. The one thing about plastic rings that you do need to take into consideration is that because they're injection molded, they have a little uh, tab. Now I have a pair of scissors, nicely marked, that I can use with bits of wire or things like this. And just snip that off, give yourself a smooth edge. That's a good idea to do if you're using uh, the plastic rings for any type of button. So the first thing to do is we're going to fold the bias strip in half lengthways and you can finger press that's fine or if you want to you can heat press but finger press should be just fine. And obviously if you've got any marking pop that on the inside. I'm just going to trim this straight. Now, if you can, it's a good idea to glue this to the ring, just the end. Now, that will, of course, mean a bit of drying time. So if you're a little impatient, you can always go ahead and use a little bit of tape, but it just helps. Now, if you've got some, I mean, most PVA glues will work. Again, if you want to get into washing and it should not come away um, all over and ruin things, but a fabric glue might be a better option, but they don't always stick to the rings. So it's a little bit of trial and error um, on that. But I've found that if I use a plain PVA as you go through the process, um, it doesn't tend to cause too many issues with washing, as I said, with a gentle wash. So we'll just leave that to dry for a little bit. If you're using silk or satin or anything that you really don't want to mark at all, my advice would be to fold around and do a little holding stitch along the raw edge side of your strip, okay? And then you don't have to worry. Once you get this started, it won't be um, that difficult to sort of, you'll, when you see what I'm doing, it will make more sense to you why that's glued there and where the stitch needs to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap. 
each wrap needs to be worked so that the folded part of the bias covers the raw edge. Now you'll notice I'm using a tapestry needle to help me thread that through. And you want to make sure you pull on the bias strip because you want it to go as evenly around as you can. And that's why we're using bias. So we can get that shaping as it goes around. So I'm just getting towards the end. Now in order to cover those edges, what I want to do is just fold in the raw edges as well. Just so that as I cover and work, I'm not going to end up with raw edges. You just need to sort of manipulate this last bit. You can fold the two edges in or you can fold just the one edge in, just slightly cover over. But basically, you want to get to the point where your last wraps aren't showing any raw edges at all. Now, I'm going to stitch this to the back. I can decide which side is the back if there happens to be a side that is a little neater than the other. Let me just get my clip here to hold this while I thread a needle. Good old third hand does come in handy. <laughs> Literally. Okay, let's see, I want some pink thread do my best to make everything match, shall I? Okay, so I've decided this is the back, so I'm just going to put a few stitches in to hold this in place. And so I don't have to worry too much um, about what it looks like. What I would suggest is do not um, go too close to the edge. You should be able to see this when I've done it because the thread is a wee bit darker. Now, don't cut this fabric excess off yet, okay? But I am going to trim that. Do I have a little flag? <laughs> Okay, like I said, don't trim that off yet. Now I'm going to take the second circle and I'm going to work a running stitch. I'll start off with a, a knot and a back stitch. And I'm going to work a running stitch around the circle. So this is the same thing that you would do um, if you're making a ball of fabric or covering a button mold or ring with fabric. So 
Then we'll start to draw that up into a little pouch. And then I'm going to stuff it with a little bit of cotton wool. Now how much you decide to put in and how padded you decide to make this is entirely up to you and to the look that you want to achieve. So I want that quite rounded. And what you need to do is you need to check that it will fit into the ring. So you will come up from behind and that it's the way that you want it to be. I think I'll put a little bit more stuffing in just to firm that up. And then I'm going to pull that tight and again double check up from the back. I think that will work quite nicely. Got a little bit of a lumpy bump there. So I'm going to push that in. And how proud you want it to stand or not is entirely up to you. There were a lot of uh, machine pressed buttons that used a very similar method, though obviously they were covered in fabric, uh, not in the bias. But uh, during the 50s and the 60s, which is partially where the name came from on this. So now you need to stitch this into place, catching the bias fabric at the edge, okay? You want to try to make sure that your button is flat at the back. So if that means that your circle presses up too high for what you are looking for, then you may want to take out a little bit of stuffing. If it um, is not enough, you want it to push up farther, then you might want to add some more stuffing. So that circle of fabric should give you a lot of different options depending on what you want to achieve. So I'm just going to stitch this to the edge of the bias. And as I say, I'm not going to go too, I'm not going to go too far to the edge of the um, ring so that all of the stitching will be covered up in theory by my felt. So I'll crack on and take this kink out first. There we go. I will crack on and stitch that to the back. So there's the center stitched in place. The excess from the bias I've also tacked down at the back so now I can cut a little bit of that away. I'd also like to apologize if you can hear an engine. It sounds like someone is mowing which is weird because it's raining. Um, hopefully my microphone won't pick it up, but if it does, I apologize. So now all you need to do is add the back. So I'm going to trim this down just a little bit more and make it a slightly smaller circle than it is just cutting a little bit on the inside of those lines. You could also, of course, use, in fact, I think I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do it a slightly different way. We're going to use some of the pink. Well, I've got a small piece of cardboard that would cover the back and a larger piece of fabric that matches the bias that we made. Okay, and now what I want to do is fold this over and crease. A heat tube tool is probably best to get a nice sharp crease, but you can finger press. So that gives me an indication of where I want to fold this under. I'm going to snip a little bit. I've done quite a large circle 
so I will probably trim some of this off as well just to make sure that the fabric is not too bulky at the back of the button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this to the back of the button, turning under as I go along that little crease that I've made. And so there we have it, one Kelly button. Named for Grace Kelly. I can see these being on um, something that she might have worn. And it's a really nice uh, little bit of a sophisticated button. Um, you can sort of you you can fussy cut a center for it. You can really make them very pretty. You could also change it up by using the same uh, basic principles and for instance putting a um, embroidered piece in the center or even a Yorkshire button in the center you've got the hard rim to actually um, firm up that button so it's got a lot of possibilities for creating something different So do please click like and hit subscribe and leave me a comment. Besides the point that I actually really like to hear from you, um, it does all also help the mysterious YouTube algorithms. <laughs>